What to? What? Frozen water? Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video. Uh, I apologize for not really updating or uh, releasing any content. I had a lot of work projects come up around the uh, end of the year so had to get those uh, work projects done and you know as much as I you know love all you guys I'm not going to be editing videos for 12 to 16 hours a day uh, non-stop uh, so work comes first unfortunately uh, but anyway I thought I'd um you know have a bit of a different kind of video uh, you know nothing much I just have to run some errands today uh, do some grocery shopping and pick up some stuff uh, some parts for the uh, Ford Ranger electrics but uh, yeah it got down into about 35 last night so it's pretty chilly uh, my Bolt EV hasn't been plugged in I've been keeping the Volt plugged in with a smaller battery and uh, but I'm charged up to hilltop reserve mode so what I wanted to do is use this as an opportunity uh, just to kind of see how the Bolt EV's uh, battery conditioning or battery temperature management handles this because I'm pretty sure the battery uh, is down to around 40 degrees right now because it's unplugged and not and not plugged in and charging you know just running around doing some errands driving about 90 miles uh, not, not even really fast driving and uh, just mild comfortable conditions I want to see uh, how well the battery does just on heating itself up uh, just over the course of the day part of the reason I want to do this is just to see but also you know there was a recent piece uh, on the Ford Mustang Mach-E where someone left the car basically unplugged uh, nearly empty in what would have been lo overnight lows down into freezing and they were surprised why they didn't see the rated or advertised DC fast charging rates after only driving it maybe 20 miles to a DC fast charger well that's just not how lithium uh, batteries work uh, you can actually damage them if they're cold and you try to charge them too quickly uh, so basically what he did was he cold soaked the battery and then tried to DC fast charge it right away uh, no lithium battery is going to let you uh, do that and still re meet the rated charging rate so this is just an example of that. Uh, I could easily heat this battery up way more if I wanted to. Uh, but if, if you wonder how warm batteries need to be, uh, they need to be about the same temperature that people like, right? Right around 75 degrees, that's kind of ideal. Uh, so all of these people saying, well, 40 degrees isn't that cold. Well, 40 degrees, you try uh, spending the night out there without any clothes on, right? 40 degrees is pretty chilly for a person. It would be pretty chilly for a lithium ion battery. So uh, it's just something to keep in mind. And really, this is not an issue because people who own EVs, they're just going to plug it in. Maybe if you're a, you know, a press person, you're just borrowing an EV to review. You don't keep it plugged in. Uh, but that's not how most EV owners are going to operate. So, you know, just to, just note that if my battery were plugged in overnight, it would be at least 60 degrees Fahrenheit right now. But, um, well, let's just uh, load up the Torque Pro and see what it is. So it's 35.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So even just turning on the car is probably going to uh, start the battery heater a little bit. Yep, 2.3 kilowatts being drawn. So, uh, yeah, it'll probably warm up while we're driving, but uh, let's head out. All right, so that was just a quick run to the mailbox so far. We've only gone 3.3 uh, miles. You'll notice the uh, efficiency is really, really poor, but I just wanted to turn on the uh, heater and the uh, defroster just to clear off the windshield. That's going to take a lot of power, and if you've only driven uh, a short distance, right, battery conditioning took 13%. Climate control took uh, 27%. So only 60% of the energy used for just this 3.3 miles uh, went to actually driving. So kind of shows you a breakdown of where the energy goes. Uh, but more to the point, um, the battery is still only 37 degrees. So uh, this short drive did almost nothing, raised like two degrees and that's with a couple kilowatts of power going to heat the battery so it actually takes a little bit of time that's a lot of mass to heat up and it has to be heated up uh, you know at a controlled pace so uh, the next stop after here is you know uh, I, I got to stop by the auto parts store that's another 40 miles out uh, so we should see a significant increase 
uh, in the battery temperature over the course of you know that 40 miles because again we're about 46 degrees uh, right now so uh, just the average temperature but just the driving over a prolonged period of time uh, will just naturally heat up the battery all right so I wanted to stop here um, just about 20 miles out about 22 miles out so as you can see you know it's a pretty nice day it's it's in the 40s uh, for most of the drive um, but the battery still isn't even warmed to ambient right and one of the reasons for that is uh, you know the Bolt EV will only warm the battery up to about 40 degrees um, when it's not plugged in right so uh, once you, once you're uh, out and driving if your battery is only 40 degrees it's pretty much gonna rely on driving to warm the battery up which it will do over time but again we're only 22 miles into this trip which I wanted to kind of tie back uh, to that auto blog story uh, with the Mustang Mach-E because this is about how far uh, that person drove, uh, Lawrence, whatever his name was, the, the writer. Um, it's about how far he drove before he got to the Electrify America charger. Now, uh, a 44 degree battery will not charge at its full peak speeds. It just won't. Now, what was interesting about that though is like I said, he left his car unplugged out who knows cold soaked for how long uh, but the point is that uh, he didn't give it enough time to uh, warm up but the fact that it was almost empty you know the Bolt EV has a little over two kilowatt um, battery heater dedicated battery heater I don't know what the Ford Mustang Mach-E's battery heater is but say it was a 10 kilowatt dedicated battery heater well sure it could you know, apply four times as much energy to the battery as the Bolt EV does, in theory, warm up four times as fast, all of that. But then you run into another problem. I've used 4% of my overall energy consumption uh, driving this four, uh, 22 miles uh, just to warm the battery. Imagine if it were four times that much. You could very easily run out of juice if the battery was warming the way uh, that Lawrence Ryder wanted the Mustang Mach-E's battery to warm. And this is where you know EV automakers, they have a choice. And you have to ask yourself, which would you rather have if you set everything else up to fail like he did? Uh, you put yourself in the worst case scenario you could possibly think of, which would you rather have? A car that charges at a fifth of its advertised speed or a car that never even makes it to the charger in the first place I would prefer a slower charging car if I screwed up that bad I would want the car to protect me too so um, I don't think it's all bad I think what happened with that Mustang Mach-E uh, it the car did exactly what it was designed to do and frankly if it were designed any differently uh, we would have probably seen a hit piece article about how the Mustang Mach-E left him stranded in winter condition because he didn't think to plug it in. Anyway, I'm going to continue on my journey. Like I said, we're up to 44.6 uh, degrees battery heat. Um, I'm only a quarter way through the drive, so uh, I'm going to continue on my errands. Well, I'm at the auto parts store, so I'm going to run in and uh, pick up some of the parts that I need. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so you'll notice things got a lot more efficient. Uh, the battery still hasn't reached ambient. And it's worth noting that uh, the Bolt EV, for example, will not charge at its peak speed until about the, the battery is about 75 degrees. So we're way, way off of peak charging speeds, even now, even over 40 miles into the trip. Uh, but the efficiency improved, the ambient temperature improved, just we're, we're at a lower elevation and uh, we're getting further on into the day. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm just going to head in and grab the stuff that I need and then later on we'll go shopping. Well, that shopping took a little bit longer uh, than I anticipated, but yeah, you'll see even here uh, now sitting you know, in 50, almost 60 degree weather, it's hot enough inside the car now, I'm going to take my jacket off. but. Uh, yeah, even now the battery is still only 50 degrees, which means it's about uh, 20, 25 degrees short of even seeing optimal uh, charging speed. So again, it takes a very long time to warm up the battery, but even if starting out with a cold battery, if you drive it enough and the temperatures start to warm up to just getting comfortable, you, you won't see a curtailed uh, uh, charging speed. All right, well, we made it back and... Uh, 
I guess, uh, what's the, the lesson to be learned here? Well, if you're uh, starting off with a cold battery, you drive a lot and it will eventually warm up. Uh, it, it stays pretty much below ambient. You'll notice uh, the temperature was about 57 degrees for the battery, uh, just below, uh, it got up to 60 degrees. Now, uh, really all this means is, if you plug in your battery and you keep it relatively full, you really shouldn't have to worry about cold gating at all. And I wasn't really driving it very hard. And the harder you're driving at, say, freeway speeds or whatever, uh, the bigger the draw on the battery, uh, the more and faster it's going to heat up. And so uh, referring back to that auto blog article, I think that's the big takeaway is... Uh, just run the vehicle the way it's meant to be run and it's not going to be an issue. You're not going to have a problem uh, keeping the battery warm. You're not going to have a problem uh, maxing out your charging rates on DC fast chargers. You know, 87 miles, everything balanced out. You notice the efficiency improved. Um, battery conditioning became much, much less of an energy draw compared to the overall draw, uh, the more miles that were driven. So yeah, and I mean, I get it. It warmed up. It's 50, 60 degrees now where it started out in the 30s, maybe low 40s. Um, and if it stays in those colder temperatures, yeah, it's going to be harder to warm up the battery. Uh, but like when I ran uh, down Highway uh, 395 during winter and it was in the mid 20s, even just, you know, that basic freeway speed driving at 65 miles an hour, even though it was icy, snowy, sleety, uh, the battery warmed up to about 60 degrees Fahrenheit after about 300 miles of driving. So, uh, you know, starting out with a warm battery, that trip would have been no issue at all. So same thing here, just keep your, keep your car plugged in and use it exactly as it was designed to. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you did, uh, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And thank you for watching.